I am very well, thank you, sir, and good morning to you too. Um, thank you. Um, it's a bit chilly this morning, so I think um, let's uh, let's let's use that as an excuse for everybody else's absence. Mm. But um, therefore, as I said, um, you guys are writing next Monday. Yeah. Um, personal selling. So important for me is um, to share. Um, and this this week has been scheduled as it as shown from the start of the term um, as a revision sessions. Um, I will continue as I've planned today, Dana, even if it's just you. Um, it will, however, probably not take the entire double period. So um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's probably going to be done in one. For me, the most important thing is um, to bring to your attention certain important aspects just before the, the test next Monday. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a, a little introduction to you. Um, and after that, um, I'm going to allow you to ask some questions. You at any point during the um, discussion, you're welcome to also just jump in. Actually, you don't have to switch off your audio. Um, you at any point can just um, say, well, stop there quickly. I need to ask a question, sir. Or um, is this what you actually meant by what you just said? Okay, so feel free to continue in a normal fashion to interrupt me at, at, at any point. Um, let me just get that first split screen on for you. Um, um, or shared screen on for you. There we go. Can you see that? Yeah. Right. The intention of this week's sessions, Dana, I've broken up the chapters that you are going to be um, tested on or that's included for your test. It's basically all, um, all the chapters that we've done, all 12 the chapters that we've completed so far. It's not, um, it's not, um, it, it sounds like a lot of work, but um, the chapters are not, um, are not big chapters with, with lots of pages and lots of facts. Um, mm -hmm. However, what I've done is I've broken it down into three separate um, PowerPoint slides. Okay. Uh, this would be the first one dealing with chapter one to four. Um, immediately after um, our question session, um, I'll show you the one that uh, I've done for chapters five to um, chapters five to eight um, and then later on this afternoon I'll, I'll upload nine to twelve the intention was to do a revision of each of these chapters um, during today's sessions and Friday uh, Thursday session um, however it, it's not necessarily um, important that it happens because none of the work that you'll see in these PowerPoints that I prepared um, is new work I've just highlighted some aspects I think is of, of greater importance. So I would study this in addition to, or as a guideline for when I do my, um, my normal studies from my PowerPoints. You should be fine if the slides that's on Moodle for every chapter, if you use that um, for your preparation. But um, these three that I've done separately is to give you important test um, information uh, as well as uh, just break it down a bit um, in, in smaller chunks. Maybe in your preparation for Monday, you want to break it down into three sections as well. Chapter 1 to 4, 5 to 8, 9 to 12. Um, in essence, and let's get to the important aspect. This is the important thing. And as I said, um, before I continue, this particular um, PowerPoint slide as well as the one for chapter eight, uh, 5 to 8 as well as the third one 9 to 12 you will find on Moodle under that online lecture folder okay in your online lecture folder you will have your July and August schedule and you will also have your um, you will also have your online lectures which or basically the video links to each of those sessions. In addition to that, I've added these as well. So you'll find them as, 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 um, as a PDF um, in that particular folder. Okay. Um, when these sessions are done, uh, today's sessions are done, or session, I don't think we'll have two sessions today. 
when today's session is done, I will also convert that into a video and upload it and you will find that in that same folder as well. Okay, so everything that you need to prepare for your, for your exam um, would be either in your online lecture, um, in, in your online lecture folder, which would be these three um, PowerPoints, um, which basically is a revision PowerPoint, as well as your online lectures with all the links to the, to the videos of all the um, sessions we've done this term. And then in addition to that, um, your PowerPoint slides, um, where it's normally on, on Moodle. Okay. Right. So Dana, I hope you know that um, it's personal selling that you're writing next uh, Monday. Am I correct with that? <laughs> okay. There's no confusion there. No. Right. So it is next Monday and the test is available between one and five. It is an online quiz. Um, it is a hundred marks. It is broken up into two sections, but both sections you'll find in the quiz. You don't have to um, exit the quiz and open another folder. Once you've started the quiz, it's just broken up into two sections, the section A, which is predominantly short questions, true or false, multiple choice, maybe short um, answer questions, give me the um, five or the three steps or something like that, um, matching columns, column A with column B, usually a description um, that you have to link with a particular concept. Um, and then section B, 25 marks, is a case study, which is again in the quiz itself. Um, and there are three questions, I think, related to the case study that you just have to then obviously answer and apply. Okay, and that's where your explanation and your application questions come in. If anything happens, um, and that's in your declaration that you will obviously tick as well before you start the quiz. Um, in your um, declaration, um, it will also state the, this emergency phone number, um, WhatsApp number, as well as um, email address. If anything happens, like with my son last week when he did his practical exam and there was problems with the computer, uh, fortunately it was done on campus. There's a lecturer that was invigilating and he could assist him with that. Um, you would be doing the quiz from home. If anything happens and the possible um, problems that we can um, experience are the following. There could be a power shortage for various reasons or there could be load shedding, which we will obviously have again from today. Um, so um, depending on what area you're in, there will be load shedding today, um, stage two. Okay, But you probably know that already. Yeah. Um, so if there's load shedding, for instance, that's at that point where obviously you will not be able to send an email to that um, email address, but you will send a WhatsApp or call that WhatsApp number on the screen. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that you save that in your phone. So if something happens during the two hours that you have, um, um, have chosen to do your, um, your test, you can immediately contact them and say, listen, this is load shedding, whatever, whatever. I'm also sure that, um, and I would recommend that the students obviously have a look Monday morning. What form of load shedding and times of load shedding has um, ESCOM, if there's any, have ESCOM decided um, for, for Monday the 7th? If you know there's load shedding between um, 12 and 2, you cannot use that as an excuse to start your and say, oh, my exam was interrupted. No, you couldn't start your exam at one. There wasn't power at one to start. Mm. So your exam would start at two, which still leaves you with more than enough time till five o'clock to complete it. On the other hand, if something happens during the exam, um, the, anything can happen. There could be a, a power surge, as I said, but it could be that the internet is in, is, is in um, the connection is interrupted or unstable, regardless of what it is. Do not finish the test and then contact the, um, these numbers. 
These numbers are for our uh, management staff in um, the academic office on campus. And that's why it's only available from 8 in the morning until um, 4.30 in the afternoon, okay, or 5 o'clock in, in this case with the exam till 5. Also remember, <coughs> my apologies, also remember that you've got two hours to write the exam. Don't start the exam at 4. You will only have one hour to complete the thing. It was 5 o'clock, it will switch off. Um, I often find that students phone the office and say, listen, yeah, the either problem, the exam was interrupted. People, once you go onto Moodle and you push that button that says, I'm going to admit the quiz now. They know, Moodle knows that the time that you started, Moodle knows the IP address from which um, 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 location you are completing the test knows exactly how long you took. It can tell you what time you started. Um, so don't take that chance. Rather not. Rather save yourself a lot of trouble and, and start the quiz on time. In other words, not later than 3 o'clock. So you don't run out of time. You should not run out of time. I've gone through the paper. It is not that difficult. And it's quite easy for you. It should be easy enough for you to complete in, in two hours. Um, Dana, with the sort of um, um, arrangements um, on the screen related to the test, do you have any specific questions or concerns? Well, so I can say when I was doing the previous um, class test, my internet just shut down completely and then I started panicking. Well, that's why I suggest save that 064 number mm -hmm. on your phone immediately when it happens. Don't even think, okay, all right, maybe it, the power will go back on or maybe uh, the internet will, um, will, will run to the router and reboot it. Don't even go through that trouble. Just immediately fund them. Because that will be an indication that you have locked up the... the, the uh, see, the, the problem is I'm going to be available um, between um, available in the sense that I'll have my phone with me um, I'll be in front of my computer from 1 to 5, but I cannot assist you with anything. You cannot contact me. It's not going to help because I can't change um, exam-related um, 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 arrangements. And that's why we've got those numbers at our, at our campus. For the people who can say, okay, Dana, sorry, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. I, I, I love that. If it's a... Um, what specifically is the problem? I know previously um, for June there was, for instance, um, those drag and drop boxes that we had for some of the questions, and students wanted to go yes. back to the uh, to the question, and then um, the whole screen was scrambled, and it wasn't in the same places as it was previously. That's what it appears like, but it actually was correct on our side. So even for those questions that automatically. Um, and I'm specifically referring here to your um, multiple choice questions and your true and false questions and your matching column questions and your illustrations where there's a drag and drop and whatever. All those questions, we go through manually ourselves as well. I check when I do, and the process is, is, is quite simple. The exam paper was set way back months ago already. It was moderated. And then we were given instructions that it needs to be uploaded to Moodle in the form of a quiz by a certain date. And that was last Wednesday. Then the moderator who moderated the paper goes onto Moodle and check and see if everything is fine. In other words, they basically do the test themselves to see if blocks are not moving, to see if you can go back to a previous question if you didn't answer it and you moved on to the next one. Um, and that process has been completed already with this particular paper. Okay. Then you will get a letter of instruction by Thursday, just after Thursday session. I will post a letter of instruction, which is already on Moodle, but you can't see it. I will just unhide it for you to see and read. And that is just basically a summary of what I've just said to you. 
and specific um, recommendations and guidelines that they provide you for the test, um, which is a lot of it is repeated, um, uh, will be repeated um, from what, I've, what I'm saying today. Um, so we double check. Then you do the paper, you complete the quiz. Um, after five o'clock, I can start marking the papers. I do the grading. Uh, the following day, the eighth, uh, I should be finished. If everything goes well, I'm usually one who tend to finish as soon as possible because it means that I can get the results of immediately to the moderator. So the moderator can immediately um, do the um, spot check because they select three, randomly three um, papers that they moderate again to check and see if anything is done. Once that process is done, it goes back to the academic office. It's uploaded onto the system. Um, and then when everybody's happy and according to the dates that, you, uh, that, that Prestige has communicated with you, the results are released. There is a, re a release date um, and it will be done on that particular day. Um, so that's the process that, that is followed from um, sitting the paper in the first place to actually you getting your result. Um, any interruption in that process? Um, be it as a result of load shedding or um, trouble with access to, to stable um, internet connections is dealt with on the spot. Some things you can prepare for, some things you just obviously have to deal with as they surface. Okay, so um, the, the one thing that we want you to avoid uh, and I know the reason for your, uh, previously when you did the, the test was also as a result of, um, of you being on, on your medication and obviously not 100% um, 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 well, in, in the best shape. Yeah. Um, so that's taken into consideration. Um, and that is why the day that you start with Prestige Academy and you fill in your registration form, you list any learning um, challenges that you might have, and that results usually in us either providing certain students, depending on what their challenges are, with um, a scribe or uh, allow more time for to complete a test and whatever. But we are aware of everybody's um, medical conditions and everybody's um, learning um, challenges. If you have, and you have not informed mm. Prestige Academy about it, um, yeah. It is your responsibility to do that. Um, we, we have to, we want to manage every single individual according to their specific needs to ensure that all assessment is done um, in a fair manner. But we can only act on information that we have. And if we don't know that Dana or Danica or um, Joshua has a problem, then we cannot fix that problem or we cannot prepare for um, how to address that particular problem. So um, it is obviously um, extremely confidential. Um, we as lecturers only get um, an email to instruct us that these are the students on the list, they will be getting extra time and those are the um, things that only our academic office um, can do. They can. They are the only ones who can change um, exam uh, durations. And for instance, if there's a problem and there was an interruption during the exam, they can change it. Uh, I can't change it. They have the authority to do it, um, and that's why they are the ones manning those emergency numbers. But please, to avoid any form of stress, exam is stressful as it is. So therefore, please, immediately. <laughs> Immediately, WhatsApp or phone that WhatsApp number. <laughs> I shall try my best okay. to avoid this stress. Um, you know what, um, Dana? I think at the end of the day, it's it's a question of um, of finding a particular way that works for you. Um, and some people find it um, even after thirty years only they are comfortable with certain. Some people um, are just comfortable immediately. Um, it's different for everybody. I think um, find and I've suggested to to my sons as well. Um, the one is still in school and he's studying. Oh, he's only attending class well, every second day almost at school. 
um, mm -hmm. because that's what the schedule is. The other one is currently on campus, um, but some days they have a week that they're off and they are just doing online lectures. My recommendations, uh, and everybody else is pretty different. Find a spot, find your spot where you are most peaceful. Find that spot where your go-to spot when you are stressed. That um, that puts you that, that puts you at at, at, at greater ease. Um, yeah. For some people, it could be outside um, on the patio. For some people, it could be their own rooms and their desk. For some people, it's a uh, little corner in the house, whatever. It's it's different for everybody, but um, find that spot and just surround yourself with all positive things, all the things that makes you happy. If it's a cup of tea, make sure you have a cup of tea when you sit down to do your exam. You can't do that in a normal exam on campus. So I mean, you might as well do it when you're doing online quiz. Um, <coughs> excuse me, Mike. Uh, prepare as if you are going to be on campus. In other words, go to the toilet beforehand um, because we sometimes find that our rhythm is very easily interrupted. If we are struggling with a question, for instance, all of a sudden you somehow have to go to the loop. Um, and that's not normally, you would not normally have done that if you were on campus, for instance. Yeah. So try and simulate what was what, uh, the exam situation, but remember that you're doing it in in a more um, friendly environment than a classroom with everybody sitting a meter apart and there's an invigilator walking up and down um, the classroom. So it is definitely less stressful, but find that spot for you and make sure that everything is there. Make sure that you, um, if it's a cold day, get your blankie, get your um, um, warm water bottle or whatever you have, your gloves and your, get whatever you need to um, feel most comfortable and sit down and then you'll find that the two hours is actually going to be um, a quite enjoyable experience. Okay. Yes, I'll try. I know you will. You always do. So, I mean, don't change that. Right, Dana, in this first module, um, what I've done is um, I'm not going to go through everything because it is in your slides and it will also be in this video when I upload it um, later this afternoon. I just have uh, Zoom sessions all the way to four o'clock today. Basically, you'll see that for every chapter, I've highlighted what the learning outcome specifically is. And in chapter one, for instance, in, in, in um, personal selling, it's quite simple that the most important things in chapter one is um, what is personal selling? Explain what personal selling is. It's the second point there. Define and explain the term personal selling. And then obviously the essence of not just this chapter, but the entire following 11 chapters up to chapter 12 deals with individually the steps in the selling process. There are 10 steps on the screen in the selling cycle. And those are the 10 steps that we will individually or that is individually um, unpacked in each of the chapters from chapter two onwards. Okay, so make sure that this is a very important slide for you because it's an important uh, process and it can appear in any test or exam in a various formats. I can ask you to, to, to name the 10 steps. I can ask you to name and explain the 10 steps. I can ask you to name and explain the 10 steps and apply it to a case study. I can ask you um, anything particular related to um, um, any of the steps. I can, I can, for instance, say step number seven is um, to meet the objections that the customer might have. Um, what um, is meant by that? So what do you have to do um, in step 10 specifically? Okay, so that is the ways in which um, we can structure the questions related to um, the selling cycle. Okay, chapter two deals with the selling process itself. 
okay, or the selling sequence. Oh, we've just done that with the ten with the ten steps. Um, and it's important, as important as it is, with the next one, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There is a specific order with Maslow. You cannot satisfy the self-actualization needs at the top, that little blue triangle, if you haven't satisfied the four, um, the four levels beneath them. So there's an order in which Maslow's needs are satisfied. It's psychological, then safety, then belonging, then esteem, then only self-actualization. And it's the same with the 10 steps in the selling process, if I can jump back to that. You don't do prospecting as step number seven. As a matter of fact, you do prospecting all the way through. <laughs> you start with prospecting and then you're going to start ph um, um, phoning people for interviews, um, which is step number two where you are doing the pre-approach and then the approach to actually meet with the prospect and then prepare them for the presentation. All along the way, you're continuously doing prospecting because once you've worked through your database of prospects um, that you have identified in step number one, um, you will have, you need more new names to start um, contacting. Okay, so question, uh, um, um, chapter number two uh, specifically um, deals with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In other words, what motivates people what motivates people to uh, to buy a product? That's basically the, the, the needs that drive them. What are the factors that influence the decisions that you take and the way in which you behave as a, as a consumer? It could be your family. It could be your um, social class. It could be um, your lifestyle, for instance, your personality. Uh, the cultural group that you belong to. And remember, under culture, we have language, we've got age, we've got religion. Okay, so each of these ones that's on the screen are in chapter two are individually addressed as well. I have to summarize them. I'm not going to repeat the entire slideshow for you. I'm just going to highlight the important ones. And obviously, your social and your cultural factors are very important factors that impact and influence your decision-making ability or the decisions that you make as a consumer. In chapter three, and topic three as well, we will um, look at the different forms of communication. And if you can remember correctly, we did um, chapter three in three different videos. Um, we had verbal communication, we had non-verbal communication, and then we had written communication. Um, it's exactly in that manner, excuse me, that you will prepare your, um, or prepare for the test as well. For, um, before we go to the verbal communication, uh, this is something that you need to know. Make a mental note of it. Make a bold, written note in some kind of marker somewhere that you can see it. The seven elements of communication of, of the communication process is very important. Briefly, we have on our left hand side, where the cursor is now, you can see we've got the sender. That's the person who talks first. Let's assume in this case, the sender is the person who's going to attempt to sell a product to the receiver. In other words, the sender talks first and says, Dana, I've got this wonderful product I want you to have a look at. Dana is the receiver and she says, okay, right. Um, what is it that you want to show me? In other words, in that process, between me speaking as the, as the salesperson and you answering as the prospect, there hasn't been a encoding of the message that in other words is how I structured my question. There's been a decoding of the message. That's how you structured your answer before replying. And then obviously um, the message itself that is sent um, is after I have made my or structured my question. Sometimes 
um, if you're doing a lot of sales calls, you will have certain questions that you um, that you prepare um, that you're going to ask certain clients. Okay, that's where we deal with, uh, I think it's chapter five, the knowledge, knowledge of the organization, knowledge of yourself, knowledge of your competitors, knowledge of the customer. If you know the customer that you're gonna phone, or you have some background information on them, your question that you will do in, or structure in the encoding stage would be in preparation for that specific um, customer or receiver. The message would then be the actual verbal um, um, question that's asked, you will listen to it, you will interpret it, and your reaction after you've decoded the message um, would be the feedback right at the bottom that you are giving me. Now, we all know that that little block in the middle with the four um, arrows pointing in all the wind directions basically um, is where a lot of um, that, that influences the noise and the distractions. That influences how you react. Maybe um, there, was a, um, there was a radio playing in the background and you didn't hear the question um, clearly. Your reaction is um, based on that, for instance. It, that, that, that plays an influence on how you react. Maybe you react and uh, say, listen, no, I'm not interested right now because you didn't hear my question um, properly because of the distractions and the noise. Okay. Just make sure that you know the seven steps in the communication um, process. The sender is encoding a message, sending the message that is decoded by the receiver who then reacts. Um, and the reaction in the form of the feedback in the response to the sender um, can be affected by any distractions or noise. Okay. Verbal communication. Again, the four items that I've listed there are dealt with individually in the chapter. It's words that you use, your tone, your pattern, your pitch. You talk quickly, I mean, and it shows that you are probably um, a bit nervous. Um, listening is extremely important. Listen is, listening is almost more important than, than talking. Um, because if you, uh, and the, the, the module deals with personal selling. So you are the person selling something to um, a prospect and therefore you have to um, listen very carefully to the responses of your prospect otherwise you're going to be selling them the wrong product or otherwise you're not going to make a sale because you're trying to sell the wrong product to them and then allow questions don't see questions as as a threat see questions as an opportunity to provide more information to your to your prospect non-verbal communication is your eye movements then we don't have to go into the, all the psychological if you're looking um, left up if you're if you're looking upwards um to your left hand side it means that you're definitely not going to buy the product you know what yes uh, it's probably true but i mean we're not going to that great depth. just make sure that you know um that eye movement is an indication um that uh, for a salesperson, if the prospect is ready to commit or not. Your body language, how you um, combined with your dress um, and the handshake, your body language, I mean, are you, are you um, walking like Steve Jobs or <laughs> sort of bend forward or you're upright and you're very <laughs> assured of yourself and, and, and very positive and you, I mean, you almost sort of command the territory that you walk in, a firm handshake, um, all speaks of confidence, then you also dress properly um, and um, ensure that you remain professional and keeping that, that spatial distance, which shouldn't be a problem <laughs> with, the, with the COVID-19 restrictions at the moment because you have, to, um, you have to keep your distance, so to speak. But those are all, five of those are non-verbal communication or forms of communication that sends a message out to the consumer or the prospect. And then your written communication, um, I think your sales letters uh, is old school. Um, sometimes it still happens when you have very big uh, transactions with companies. It's usually when businesses do business with other businesses. Postcards is just a nice um, way of, and it's, it's done mostly electronically nowadays, um, just to send somebody, um, thank you very much for supporting our business. We look forward to you your next visit or something like that. Um, emails is, is, is one that's used very, um, excuse me, is used very um, commonly nowadays. 
and your proposals obviously is a follow-up to specific customers that you want to um, more mostly your loyal customers your um, customers that have been supporting your business for a long time you you send them proposals before actually um, everything goes public so they get a sort of a preview of, um, of, of what is about to happen at your business what new products are available so you almost sort of give them that that VIP treatment um, in the form of a proposal which is often done in, in an email it's a proposal doesn't necessarily have to be a presentation okay there are some barriers to communication as well you can have a look at them it's not necessary for us to unpack them individually um, and then um, in chapter four um, chapter four we can be discussing uh, the different forms of knowledge and the importance of knowledge for you um, it is very important that you um, as a salesperson have good product knowledge you almost have to I mean there's no point in you working for VW as a salesperson but you drive them BMW um, um, a BMW I mean, I mean what, what sort of message that it, it shows that you don't have confidence in the, in the, in the products that you are selling um, so it is important um, that that you uh, believe in the products yourself um, and it helps because then you can when you're trying to sell a product to a prospect that doesn't know you or the brand for that matter um, you can talk from experience because you've experienced the benefits of that product yourself and therefore um, it's easy for them to uh, or for easier for you to, um, to convince that person because I mean, I'm using the product I mean look I mean five weeks ago I had spots on my skin and I'm using this particular moisturizer and look everything is gone um, you can talk with conviction and that makes it believable and it makes it easier for the prospect to trust you as, as, a, as a salesperson who's genuine who wants to resolve their problem who wants to sell them the right product because remember they're anxious to they're anxious to make a mistake and buy the wrong product nobody wants to do that okay um, right but we qualities of a salesperson that's also still part of chapter four just look at some of the um, qualities again I'm not going to ask you an essay question so name name the seven or eight um, qualities that a good salesperson should have I think once you've gone through all the chapters in preparation for your test on Monday you'll find that it's very easy to find qualities of a salesperson it very often these qualities that is listed there repeats itself throughout the other chapters as well sales knowledge yep very important um, you need to know what sales knowledge is uh, what knowledge is necessary um, and you need to obviously not be scared to share the knowledge with your prospects the whole knowledge um, pro process um, is, is, is important because you as a salesperson need to have sufficient knowledge of your organization um, obviously you need to know your own strengths and weaknesses you need to know the customer get a bit of detailed background um, it, it's, it's fine if it's if you only have a name and a, um, a name and a contact number that you got from a referral or that um, maybe you picked up at an expo that you visited uh, and you do not have any background on this individual then obviously it's 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 not um, you can't follow these um, these steps but it is important to try and, and and design a profile of the customer try and get as much information as possible it's much easier to get this information if you are contacting a business and you want to sell 10 copiers to them because then you can actually go onto the website and get the mission and vision statement you can prepare you can look at the um, previous history of, of companies that they have used um, to supply them with, with copiers um, so that's that's information that, that that the more information you have about your customer the better you are prepared and obviously I've said already you have to know the features and the benefits of your um, of your product um, very very well this is where the fab um, and principle is, is applied in other words features advantages and benefits of the product um, you need to know your marketing mix in other words why do we need to know our communication mix um, our communication mix 
uh, will assist us to choose the correct way of communicating with our customers. Um, if you have a name and a contact number in front of you, um, it might you don't know what the specific situation is of the person that you are contacting. Um, and that's why it's important to gather as much information on, on, on your customers, on your prospects. But the way in which you communicate is very important. If you phone the person and says, listen, I'm sorry, I've got limited data. Um, can I give you an email address or can um, you just maybe WhatsApp me a number then I can reply to it. And you need to find out what the conditions or the circumstances of the particular um, prospect is and choose the correct medium of getting the message to that person, okay? Uh, you need to know the price of your products, obviously, that's part of the knowledge of the, of the product, but you also need to know up to what point can you negotiate. You can see this person is very interested in buying a product, but once they start asking questions about the price, it's usually indication that they are ready to buy, but they just need um, or they want to negotiate the best possible price. Um, and you can easily say to them, listen, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can work out something for you. You know what? As a matter of fact, if you buy this car before the end of the month, I can actually get it in any color that you want, for instance. Okay. Um, and maybe we can even throw in a tow bar as well. Okay. So you will need to know what your parameters are. How much discount can you, can you give um, the customer? Okay. Know your competitors. You need to especially know where your competitors are doing something better than you. And you also need to um, know where you can, um, where you are doing better than them. So you want to improve. In other words, the sort, of, sort of a SWOT analysis that you're doing on your competitors. Where are they good? Okay, right. They're good at that. Right. So that's one of our weaknesses. We can improve on that. So if you can improve where they are better than you up to the point where you are doing it exactly like they are doing it and the things that you are strong in, you can even improve further, you will have a competitive advantage. Okay, you need to know the economy in general. Um, in other words, is now a good time to phone people uh, about um, luxurious items? Uh, probably not, a lot of people have lost their work already. A lot of people um, have loved, lost ones um, and the economy is tight. Um, so yes, you need to know the general um, condition of the economy and the particular industry that you're in. The tourism industry are battling at the moment um, because people up to a week ago couldn't really travel across the, the borders. Um, now all of a sudden people can do that um, now would be a good time in the tourism industry to contact um, people, to advertise, uh, communicate the specials that may be available. Um, it will still obviously depend on the economy and how much money people have to take that break or that holiday, but at least you know that the industry is on the upward curve. Okay. Technology, don't be afraid. Use technology. Embrace technology um, and ensure that you know what, and that this sort of ties in with your knowing your communications mix. Um, in other words, which platform is the most popular one that's being used by the prospects that you are contacting? Okay. Most importantly, nothing can happen if you don't know yourself. Know yourself, and if you know you're a procrastinator, you need to work on it. If you know that you're not good with admin, you need to improve on that. If you're not good at talking on the phone to your prospects, then you need to practice that. So know your own um, strengths and weaknesses, um, because if you don't, very often an objection or a rejection from a prospect who's not buying from you um, can get you down and you feel despondent and you, you, you um, see it as, uh, as something personal, which obviously it's not. Right, I've finished the chapter with um, the seahorse technique that, that is often used to ensure that you improve your memory um, on how you remember things and information. Um, and then Dana, as I suggested um, before a Monday, trust yourself, you actually do know more than you think, okay?
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do. <laughs> um, <laughs> sir, I've got a question. Of course. Anytime. Can we um, also study or not necessarily study, but go through our assignment? Yes. Yes, I would definitely, I would definitely um, go back to my assignments um, and, and use that as, as a preparation. Maybe not the structures of the questions, but definitely uh, the topics of the questions, yes. And yes, maybe sometimes even the structure of the question. But yeah, the assignments is a, is a good indication. And although you haven't um, started um, assignment number two yet, um, mm -hmm. the fact that you have access to it um, because it's on Moodle, uh, just remember that none of that will be available on the day of the, of the test. Um, they will all be hidden for you. Okay, but you can use them up to the start of your test. Okay. And it's a, it's a, very, it's a very wise thing to do. So I need to... Okay. Yeah, it was that that I was just curious about. Okay. Um, they know they're going to quickly just going to um, that was the first one and this is the next one um, I'll be finishing very shortly the same repeats itself and I'm not going to go through it in, in any detail the second one the one you see on the screen at the moment that's the second re revision um, PowerPoint slide and this deals with chapters five six seven and eight okay Okay. It's done and set up in the same in the same manner as the previous one. I've again given you the details about the exam, and every chapter, all the important things um, are highlighted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Any any questions at this point, Dana? No, no, I'm I'm if good. You, once you go through the work and once you start preparing. Um, Obviously, our next session um, on Thursday, you're more than welcome to um, ask questions, okay? Yeah, I'll I see because I'll have to um, So, if I do stumble along the way, then I will be sure to make a note of the questions and then I'll ask. Sure. Then at the moment, I'm, I'm battling with access to my uh, Prestige Academy, J at prestigeacademy.co.za um, email address. So post something on the on the on the forum for me, okay? Then I can reply from my from my Gmail account for you, okay? Uh -huh. If you have okay. any questions, just just drop it on the forum for me on 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 Moodle, um, and I will I'll look at it every day, and I'll respond to it um, immediately, okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. Good. Thanks very much for um for um for joining. Um, you definitely will benefit from this. I'm not so sure about the others. <laughs> But again, you focus on what you can control. You can't control their ways and lifestyles and, and you focus on your own work. This is your future. It is. I need to pass. Don't stress about it. So, okay. But thank you very much. Enjoy your preparation. Um, I'll upload the video this afternoon and uh, even maybe later this morning. And then um, at any point, yes. Uh, drop me um, a message on the forum and I will reply to it and everybody else can also see um, if there's any problems and um, then we'll see each other again and we'll talk on Thursday. Okay. Fantastic. Keep Thanks, Dana. Enjoy the rest of the day. You too. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye.